What's going on you guys, Mr. Allen here. In this video, I'm gonna run you guys through the Transformations app on your TI-84 Plus graphing calculator and how you can use it in your classroom. So the first thing we're gonna do here is hit the Apps button on our calculator and it's the last option. So I'm just gonna arrow up and there it is, Transform. So if you hit Enter on that, you gotta hit Enter a second time after it runs you through the little menu of settings there. And then I'm gonna hit Y equals and that's where you're gonna notice something a little bit different in your calculator. We have this play pause looking button for Y1 and Y2. And you're gonna have whatever function you have left in your Y1, Y2, whatever you have typed in there is gonna be there. So I'm gonna clear that out. You're also gonna notice in the top right, there is a quit app option there. We'll get to that a little bit later when we're all done. All right, but for now, what we can do is we can type in our own equation if we want to, or, or you can arrow over to the left twice to that blue and then the play pause button, hit enter and this menu will pop up. So from here we can change the color of our graph which is the same in any other situation. I'll just leave it blue for this one. Arrow down, I'm gonna have a few options there as well that we'll run through at some point in this video. Uh, but I'm gonna stick to the play pause button for the start. I like that one the best. And then down here, we actually have a library of functions. You have your y equals mx plus b slope intercept form. Uh, we have a quadratic. We also have a quadratic in vertex form. We're gonna use that one here today. Uh, then we have in factored form. Then we've got uh, in standard form. Now we got cubic, so on and so forth. We even go through absolute value and trig functions. So a lot of different options here, depending on whatever your unit you're in, uh, whatever you wanna explore with your students. So I'm gonna go with the vertex form here. All right, and I'm gonna arrow down, hit enter on okay. And now it puts this in here. All right, so that's super awesome. You could type these in. Again, you could type them in or use those preloaded ones. All right, so next thing here is I'm just gonna hit graph and we'll see where we're at. So if I hit graph, I've got, an interesting window, right? So a lot of your students are probably gonna have a different window depending on what they were doing last, if they borrowed a calculator. So I'm just gonna hit zoom and I'm gonna do standard, number six. Now there's other ones that you can do here, but I like zoom six and there we go. So we've got our, our quadratic here, but all these numbers are a little bit uh, different. Everybody's might be a little different in your class. So what I'm gonna suggest is that you hit the setup button. You're gonna do so by hitting graph right now and it brings you into the setup menu, okay? So from here you can change the options of that play, pause, and just play, and then that like fast forward type of button. Um, but I'm gonna go down to the A, B, and C. I'm gonna change A to one and I'll change the other ones to zeros, okay? So that way we start at the origin with our vertex. Down here we have the step, okay? So that'll come up a little bit later, but that'll be how much we're gonna change those values, those uh, the A, B, and C values when we're in that graph. So I'm gonna leave it at one for right now, okay? Now I'm gonna hit graph. And when I do so, we can see the graph right there and check this out. If I arrow to the left and to the right, it's gonna change that A value by one. So if I hit to the right, it's gonna make that A value two, thus giving ourselves a vertical stretch and then more and more and more. And we can even go to the negative numbers here as I go to the left a little bit more and more. Boom, as you see it flips over, reflects. Um, so these are just some observations you could do with your, with your students there, have them write those things down. Uh, if I arrow, use my up and down arrows now, that's gonna go to my B value. So what's that gonna change? Well, as I increase that B value, it does move to the right. But something that you wanna note with your students is that it's X minus B. So that number is the opposite of what you see there, that when I see a, a X minus five, it's actually going five to the right. Okay, and then if I arrow, use my down arrows again, I'm gonna to get to that C value. And again, I can move left and right with my arrows, increasing or decreasing by one, okay? So now if we go back to that setup, so if I hit graph again, if you want, you can also do this by, you know, say 0.5, so if you want to do a little bit at a time. So I change that to 0.5, hit graph. Now when I arrow left and right to increase my values, it's going to go by 0.5, okay? So fun little bits there, you can change that if you want. Um, you can also actually just type whatever you want. Let's say I want that C value to be 7. I'll just type 7, hit enter, and it shifts my graph way up. Now my C value is seven, lovely. All right, so that's just the basics of this thing right here. Now let's check out those other buttons. So I'm gonna hit, or those other settings. I'm gonna hit setup again, and we can go to, uh, let's restart this all at one, zero, and zero, and I'm gonna keep it as a step of one. Now if we go to the uh, play button, actually let's do this, let's do trail on first. So trail on, what does that mean? 
Well, that's gonna give us a residual graph from whatever we just did. So this is a way that if I change, say my C value now, since I'm already on that, I'm gonna to go to the, to the right, so I'm gonna increase it by one. You're gonna see the old graph there, it'll leave it you know, behind so the kids can see what's happening, right? If I change my B value, I'm just gonna go, uh, let's see, I'll arrow up to get to B. Let's change that B value to a four. Hit enter jumps it over, right? And now I can go, you know, I can shift from there if I want, I can keep increasing, and you're just gonna see it over and over and over again. Now to get rid of all of those, I'm gonna go back to my setup, turn my trail off, and then I'm also gonna go down here and reset these values, and that'll get rid of all of my trails. So restarting at the origin, I think that's just a nice place to start for these. So let's go back to the setup now and check out some of the other settings there. We have this play button here, okay? So now, it, notice it says max two down there. Well, that will just change how many uh, different animations we do. Let's just say we want to do three. It's going to generate these things here, and then it will just show a shift of changing that B value by three. Okay, so you can do that with all the different values. I don't really see a whole lot of use for this one. I think it's better when the kids actually just manually do it themselves. Okay, so we're going to hit enter to stop it, hit graph to go back to the setup. I'm just going to keep on that play pause, and the other one does a similar thing. Again, I think the play pause is really where the value is here. So now the next thing that I want to show you guys here is actually using a different screen, okay? So we're going to go to mode right now. Hit your mode button, and you'll notice down here uh, at the full, horizontal, or graph table. Well, graph table is going to be like a split screen sort of thing. So when I hit graph table, and I'm going to go back to graph now, you're gonna notice this table of values that appears. So if, and let's get this thing centered here, okay? So I'm gonna hit second table, so we can get to our table here, and I'm gonna change my X values. Let's get it kinda of like right in the middle there. Oops, I went too far. Let's go one down, boom, okay. So now I have zero, zero at the middle of my table. We'll go back to the graph here. So now when I change my values, we're gonna see the table change in real time, which is really cool. So if I go up to A right now, I'll just change my lead coefficient again. If I increase that by one, you see all those output values, all those Y values change. If I increase it again, boom, you see them change again. So let's go back to one for that, and then let's go to our B value. So if I change my B value, what's gonna happen? Let's see here. So if I go to the right one, you're gonna see all of those values change in that output once again. You see them all kind of shifting the same way. Okay, so the kids can write these things down, maybe jot down what their table is, or just general findings here of what's going on. Let's bring that back to zero, and then I'll go to my C value. What should happen here? I think this one's usually a little bit more clear. You can kind of see them all just shift up by one, right? It all stays still centered around that zero, zero, which is nice, but you see all these values just keep going up by one. So I really think the graph table mode uh, is honestly the best way to go about using this, this app here. You can get started without it and then jump into the graph table so the kids can start jotting these values down. But really, that's pretty much all there is to it with this, uh, with this Transformations app. So feel free to try it with your quadratics, cubics, trig functions, whatever you want. But I think quadratics are really a great way to get this thing started and start seeing some of these shifts, these transformations. It's a great way to explore the graphs. Now to quit out of this app, there's actually a couple ways to do it. But if you're in the Y equals, like we talked about earlier in the video, I'm just gonna arrow up to where it says plot one, plot two, plot three, arrow over to quit app, hit enter on that, and then quit transform graphing. Now you're back to your normal mode. You will still see the preloaded function in your Y equals, but we can just clear that out. Get back to your normal graphing from there. That's about it. So if you guys have any questions at all, please uh, leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe, and have a fantastic day. See you guys later.